My name is Mark Dixon. This is my research presentation for COMS 520, Communication Theories, uh, with Dr. Kelly. My title for my research is Servant Leadership Theory from a Socially Constructed Worldview and a Biblical Worldview. Now, the purpose of this study is to discover the differences in perspective from the secular and biblical worldviews in servant leadership, also to show the difference in characteristics and to give a better understanding of servant leadership. Now, when we're looking at the secular, secular view of servant leadership, uh, you'll normally see anything written about it um, has to do with Robert Greenleaf. Greenleaf was born in 1904. He graduated from a polytech school and with an engineering degree. And uh, he also was a math major and got a job with AT&T in 1926, uh, which is one of the largest corporations in the world. Now, he developed the idea of servant leadership through his personal experiences and from reading a book called Journey to the East by Herman Hess. Now, what happened in this book is there's a group of people on a journey, and they had a servant in, portrayed in this book. His name was Leo. Now, Leo did anything and everything um, that the people needed that were going on the journey. And Leo uh, then vanishes. And what happens is they learn that Leo was actually leading them. He gave them what they needed, and he gave them direction, and he was the driving force for them on this journey um, to get to, obviously, the east. And what Greenleaf did was he decided to base his theory on Leo. Uh, he says that the servant leader is a servant first, as Leo was portrayed, and it begins with the natural feeling that one wants to serve, to serve first, then the, the conscious choice brings on to aspire them to lead. Now, what is causing difficulty in the secular world for this theory to get through is the, is the fact that you have to serve first. Um, and, and Adam Smith says this, and this was even before the leadership theory had, had come around, but it, it still holds true. It is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from their regard to their own interest. And what's, what, what Greenleaf is saying goes completely against that. Greenleaf wants you to not take your own interest and put it aside and put the interest of others in front. And that is a hard concept for the secular world to grasp. Now, a man named Mitch McCrimmon uh, talks about servant leadership. He says, The harsh reality in business is that employees are a means to an end. Effective managers will, of course, try to engage and motivate to include the employees, but that, does, but that doesn't amount to being a servant, he says. Uh, the truth is that while managers fire employees who aren't performing, no servant can fire his master. Therefore, the sense of servant leadership is interesting, but clearly false. So this is some, these are some of the things that, that the secular view of servant leadership is facing to be implemented. Now, the characteristics of a servant leader will refute what McCrimmon has said. A servant leader must have ten characteristics traits that have been identified by Larry Spears, who is the CEO of Green, the Greenleaf Foundation, um, and he has taken over uh, as an advocate for servant leadership. And what he has said and what he has done is taken these 10 characteristics from what Greenleaf has written and, and said that these are the most important ones. These are the 10 characteristics of a servant leader, and it's through a secular worldview. Listening, empathy, healing, awareness, persuasion, conceptualization, foresight, stewardship, commitment to the growth of people, and building community. Now, empathy here can refute 
what McCrimmon was saying, and excuse me, I'm not going to go through all of these due to, to time, um, but I will go over the ones that, uh, that have a, a very good point and uh, that you might not understand. So empathy, uh, from what McCrimmon said, is a servant cannot fire their master. Well, what empathy is uh, to Spears and Greenleaf, it, they have to have it. They need to be, people need to be accepted and recognized for their special and unique spirit. They must assume the good intentions of their people and not reject them. Um, so what Spears is saying is that you can reject the, the performance. You can reject the behaviors. You just cannot reject the person. Uh, so it's on a more personal level than what McCrimmon is seeing. And that's because I truly believe McCrimmon doesn't understand the characteristics of a servant leader. So that's why he wrote what he wrote. You look at healing. No, you don't have to be a doctor to heal. The healing aspect is getting to know your servants or your employees on a personal level, being able to connect with them and humanize yourself as a leader uh, so that they can have that connection with you and want to serve you better. Uh, Persuasion, no, not like a car salesman. Uh, you put your own personal agenda aside. You persuade people uh, by influencing them, but for their benefit, uh, not for your own as a car salesman. Um, conceptualization and foresight that they deal with what you do now, how that affects you in the future. Foresight is trying to predict what you need to do now to better your business, better your employees in the future. Uh, stewardship, self-explanatory, commitment to the growth of people, very important. doesn't seem like a characteristic trait because it's more than one word, of course, uh, but it is. Uh, you have to serve first, put your own personal agenda aside, and your goal is, in the secular worldview, to gr- help other people grow, to help them reach their own uh, goals and dreams. And that is, that is what secular servant leadership is about and also building the community. Now looking at this from the biblical lens so you can kind of compare and contrast, the biblical lens will, is considered spiritual leadership. So that's what I'm going to refer, it, uh, refer to servant leadership as um, just to cut down on how many words I have to use. The heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Proverbs 16, 9. This is the basis that J. Oswald Sanders um, puts on spiritual leadership. He says that anything you do has to be uh, established or has to be influenced by the Lord. And that is what leadership is all about. It is about getting people to the kingdom of heaven. If you go back to what was said here in the secular world, commitment to the growth of people is the point. To the biblical lens, it is to build the kingdom of God. So there's, two, there's a difference in, in the purpose. The model for servant leadership is Jesus Christ. Now, what Sanders does is he takes the ten secular views, the ten secular character traits, and he puts spirituality all through them. So, boom, we've got those ten. Now we have four more uh, that have to deal with spiritual leadership. And he says you have to have wisdom, which is kind of like discernment. You have to be able to know what you're doing is, is from God and, and everything you do has God dealing with it. Then you look at humility. Um, humility is being able to put your own ego aside and... It doesn't have anything to do with having low self-esteem. It has everything to do with having such a high self-esteem you don't need credit for what you're doing. Integrity and honesty go hand in hand. Important in both worlds, but Greenleaf does not identify it as being a key characteristic as Oswald Sanders does. Um, Love, and you have to love everyone. Love is a key aspect to being a Christian. Um, you, you look at 
the Bible and what it says about love in 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Let all you do be done in love. So that's why Oswald put love in here. Spirituality, I talked about it before. Everything you do has to be God-led. Everything you do. And your purpose is to lead people to Jesus Christ. The conclusion and future study of this research. Okay, the conclusion is there are differences. Uh, and, and to better understand those differences, uh, we looked at the ten characteristic traits of a secular world without any spirituality through it. In the spiritual leadership, which is through the biblical lens, you have your ten characteristics of the secular world, your four or your five uh, from the spiritual world as described by Oswald Sanders. And that is what separates the two. And I know it seems obvious before, but, but, but it's really not. Um, the secular world even kind of brings some of the biblical ideas over to it. Um, but servant leadership is that exactly in the secular world, which is to serve others. In the biblical world, it is used to bring kingdom or bring people to the kingdom of heaven. More research needs to be done in the secular world for successful businesses. You look at Dan T. Cathy, the CEO of Chick-fil-A. You look at Southwest Airlines. They are very, two very successful businesses, and they um, need to be studied more. Why, are, why did they work? And, and why uh, aren't people using their models? And they need to have more research in different business settings. I know there's more than just those two out in there out in the world using a servant leadership style. So let's see if they can be successful anywhere. If they can be successful as a basketball coach or if they could be successful in the business world. Let's just see what happens. I really appreciate you taking your time to to listen to me. I know I've kind of gone over my time, uh, but it's a lot of information to try and get into seven or eight slides and and do the presentation on. So I want to Wish you luck on your future endeavors. I will pray that God will lead you in the right path and, and that you will listen. I want to thank Dr. Kelly for, for allowing me to do this. Uh, it's a subject I'm very passionate about. So thank you, Dr. K. And I look forward to working with you all in the future.